Welcome back to Nashville, Tennessee, Fish and Freaks. We got a different video for you here today. Me and OSG are traveling. Beautiful lady right over there. So we're doing a little sightseeing here in Nashville. And I'm visiting with the Music City Bass Fishing Team. And last night we went and we uh, sat down with those guys and we talked about industry and tournament fishing and and the you know the future what what these guys want to do i'm trying to help help them out answer questions and we're going to be hitting the water with a few of them here today we've got one more stop before we hit the lake today we're going to be going to a little distillery <laughs> tasting a little brown water before we hit that beautiful tennessee green water so let's head over there let's get a little taste of tennessee and let's keep this ball rolling guys so come along stay tuned Alright guys, we have made it to the lake. The Nelson's Greenbrier Distillery. It was a really cool story. I got to learn what a real Tennessee whiskey is. I'll give you a hint, it's got to be filtered through charcoal to be official Tennessee whiskey. I'm about to jump in the boat with one of the teams from the Music City Bass Fishing Team. And this is Cade and Harrison right here. This is Cade. What's up? What's up my brother? How we doing? Good. We got Harrison right here. What's up? He's our captain. We got the old Burke fired up. We got Pop back there. Say goodbye to Dad. All right, let's crack the beers, boys. Go. He's gone. Just kidding. We got to get five fish. Probably How do we catch five fish? Uh, we're gonna go hit some drops. Then we're gonna hit some grass beds. Yeah, we're gonna fish much top water today. Okay. Top water is a really big player on this lake in the summertime. Conditions. It has actually been cooler here than I ever would have imagined. The last yesterday was mid 80s, just kind of cool. The nights, I think last night was 68. Pretty incredible. A lot of rain, so top water might be a player. You guys mentioned some grass, grassy type things. Big grass beds for sure. Okay. I have actually not fished this lake in, in over 10 years. I really do not remember much about it, except I did a lot of ledge fishing in the hot summertime. All right, blazing worm, tied on, ready to go. Here we go. 
5.40 in the afternoon right now. So we're in a little, let's call it an imaginary micro derp. All right, there was, there's a lot of boats out here right now. I think there actually is a derby going on. We're gonna do a little worm chunking. Um, I'm seeing some grass around the shoreline. Looks really good for maybe an evening bite, swim jig, something like that. Uh, water's kind of dingy. I'm here to observe, learn, and, uh, and root these boys on. All right, boys, here we go. Pretty much just cast that big log. It's kind of my landmarker. All right, throw one? towards that big log. I said that a lot in my guiding days. Get him. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, oh no. I know. Like, the butt sticking right off here. Right Looked like he had a little meat on him. God. Wait a minute, boys. Are we are we swinging and missing over here? We can't be missing doinks. I've never looked. You might want to come up here and look at this. What do you got? Let me see. I'm gonna see. I've never seen a brush pile that big on this lake in my life on a live scoop. Yeah, that that deserves a cast or two. Oh, oh. Yep, yeah, got me. It's either a bluegill or a little bass. Oh, could be a gill or a crappie. I was just using the force, boys. No live scope. Yeah. Yeah. If you get those taps and you keep swinging and missing, and choose the crappie. You definitely had a bass, yeah, it Cade. Was a bass for sure. Yeah. Wait. Time to clock in here. Uh -huh. Can't have three misses. Here we go. I'm thinking some of us need to throw top water, one of us needs to flip. Shallow. Yeah, I don't know if they're shallow yet, but they might be. Let's get that skunk out. All right, I'm seeing a buzz. Oh, buzz bait and worm. Like you guys' combo. Like the method you're working here. Thinking I might have to get on a swim jig if we're going to be doing this. This is what we're going to be doing. Grass and shade are good summertime deals. Ooh. Get that follow up. Harrison just had a blow up on a buzz bait. I do, yeah. Sometimes I'll swim it weightless when it's real thick. Yeah. Just looks like a buzz bait. nabbers all right guys we got about four bites right now I just missed one on blazing worm just spit it right there at the boat we got probably two hours of solid sunlight let's do it let's go shady grass I like it Get him! Get him, dude! Fish just busted right here in the grass. We about to go grass hero on him. Oh, the Alabama shake is? No. We went down to Lay Lake to fish with this one dude, and it's like a thing down there. It's like when you're reeling your swim to through the grass, you're like it's bumping like you're, it. You're oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I do that sometimes. I didn't know it was called the Alabama shakes, but. No, I uh, we had no clue what they were talking about. I I usually stroke mine. I'm a stroker. I'm a Texas stroker. That's what I'll call it. Oh, I just had him. Right there. Just stroked him right there. As soon as it hit the water, he had it. He liked my Texas stroke, man. Not the best setup here with the fluoro. Usually go braid, but we got a bike. About a two-pounder. Hooked up. 
There we go. Get him out. Let's go. Oh, no. Tree pounder. He was so far back there. He's back there in that juice juice, huh? Get him. You got him? You hooked up? Come on, boys. I'm watching. He's like rolling around. What the heck? Uh, okay, boys. We have had seven bites and no landings. And you had braid on there, right? Uh, I don't have braid on this one. No? No, but I'm fishing for them. Really, they have their bait. You can catch 30 fish on them, but they're actually horrible. Yeah, it's it's the salt uh, content usually. So there's a fish that just blew up right here. Oh, I saw that. Yep. Oh, I lost him. What is it? What is with this, boys? Do we have hooks on our base or what? All right. What's the move? What are we thinking? What's in your heads right now? You're in a derb. What are you doing? I think we're gonna flip on them uh, to fish and worms and marinas and maybe a few chatterbaits or spinnerbaits or something. They're gonna go hit a point and right at dark, we're gonna fish uh, one of my favorite grass beds on the whole lake. Okay, you got a little milk run set up. See, we can't pull out a couple of nice yeah. ones. All right, Cade, okay, you like the plan? I like it. Good with I it? I approve, yep. Okay. All right, so one of the questions the boys were asking me was about plastics. You may have this question too. Like, how come some of the Guggen baits? You only you catch one fish and the, and the plastic's done. So we've taken note of that. And on some of the baits, we've increased the amount of salt content and then also reduced uh, the plasticity so that it's, it's softer or it's, it's stiffer. But some of them, you want it to be really soft. Like Lunker Log, some, some of those baits you want maximum action on. So we keep the original recipe, but some of these we are tuning. So if you go get a newer bag off the shelf, you may notice bandito bugs are a little stiffer. Go ahead and crank her up. Crank her up. I know you're ready to roll. We're rolling the next hole, but this is one of the questions they were asking. So just want to tell you guys too. So some baits you want softer, some baits you want a little stiffer for flipping. But anyway, that's something we've taken note of and just in the recipe on some baits. How far are we going? Um, a few miles down. A little run? Back where we came from. All right, we're ripped. Are the Nike dry fit socks, are, are those like a team? You got to have them or what's the no, deal? No, but I'm actually starting to think they're bad luck because <laughs> I've been fishing barefoot lately. That might be what's new. There you go. A lot better, actually. So you guys are uh, your teammates. Yes. So what's your typical strategy when you're fishing a derb? How do you guys play off of each other's strengths well, we, and weaknesses? We usually throw one, one of us will throw one during practice. We'll throw different baits and find what works. So unless we're like on them, you know, you know, unless we're just catching them left and right on one bait, we try to like kind of go in different paths and see if we can't pick them off off different things. Smart, smart. Or even at the start of a tournament, like down in Florida. Uh, we were fishing some offshore grass. This was what got us to the national championship. And uh, so I was throwing a crankbait over the grass, and he was throwing a Texas rig. We, we had been catching them all week on a Texas rig, but I picked up my crankbait because I knew it would work. And I caught two of our keepers that day on that crankbait. And so then he switched. And we grinded out the rest of the day, and we caught two more on a Texas rig at the end. Help to secure more. the spot. And this national championship was humongous. Yes. I yes. mean, a big deal. And this was at Hartwell. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lake Hartwell, Anderson, South, South Carolina. Carolina. So what did you guys think about fishing that event? Like, how, how did that feel walking up on stage at a, an event that big? That, honestly, didn't feel that different. You just, there's more people, but you're still, all it is is weighing in fish. But it, I mean, it's an experience to see that many boats and compete. We struggled day one, but day two we kind of just like went fishing, and uh, we caught three really nice ones, and we pulled up with a really big bag. We jumped up 46 spots. Wow. I'd say that that day two was it was rewarding. That you was know. memorable for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was on Cade's birthday too. The mm hand -hmm. that is cool. And how many boats were there? Uh, in teams? our tournament, almost we, 200. In the high school, almost 500. So it was a wow. huge tournament. What would you say is the biggest thing you're trying? 
to learn when you go to these lakes? Like, what's the biggest questions that you typically have? Well, on the way there, I'm reading Topo and watching YouTube videos usually and weeks and months before. I like it. See, when I, when I was in high school, we didn't have high school uh, tournaments. I, I would read a lot. Bassmaster Magazine, I'd watch a lot of Saturday morning TV. Sometimes I didn't compute to my exact lake that I was going to, but it seems like now on YouTube, there's so many creators, there's so many videos, you can pretty much learn exactly what you want to. Like if you want to learn about skipping jigs under docks and clear water, or, you know, wintertime spooning for suspended bass or, you know, exact jerk bait, whatever, whatever. You can learn exactly what you want to do and take it to your body of water. So it's really cool. Really cool to see it evolve. Fourth quarter of the of the Derb. Gonna make it happen. Got a got a marina right here. Actually, this is crazy, you guys, because ten years ago, uh, ten years ago, I do believe this is where I launch out of for my practice, uh, and I ended up finding a pretty decent spot out here on this ledge, fishing a spoon and some crankbaits. This is an area where actually something crazy happened this year, very dangerous. So I want to show you a, a pretty cool product. If you guys have not seen this, I thought about getting one for my crispy collector. He's raising it up right here so you guys can see it. There's a, there's a, a cable and a rope right here that goes all the way around. And as he's lifting that up, it's getting tighter. So this will prevent this motor from flipping up and becoming a, uh, basically a blender. So uh, an unfortunate thing that happened uh, uh, this past season was someone was running up in this creek and hit a random tree and the motor flipped up. He was pretty much hit bottom on plane and his motor flipped up and it chopped like his arms up, his whole like torso and everything. And so then uh, he recovered. He came and gave a speech at one of our tournaments trying to convince us to buy the leash, which you all just saw on the motor. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, pretty good salesman for that. Yeah. The leash is literally what it's called. Go check them out for sure. So if you guys are, you know, on a lake that's got some crazy stumps, random floaters, any of that stuff, probably a good thing to look into. All right, boys, fourth quarter moves. What are we doing? Uh, well, we're going to put around inside the back of this marina. Wow. Can't believe nothing's touched that frog. Golly. Grass. No, it was grass. I wasn't gonna not set the hook though. Yeah. Got him, boys. Got him. We landed. Hey, fish. Woo! Oh, I'm gonna sniff this one good. Get a, get a whip. Woo! Get the old yig fish, man. Yig came out. <laughs> yeah. All right, boys. We out here. Hey, grinding. But we got one. We got one. We're giving a deep sniff. Oh, put a little extra sauce on that one. Let him go. Tennessee sniff. The old jig bite right at dark. The old jig. Swim jig got it done. I thought, I thought we were going to have a skunk here for a second. We were like, can't, can't have that. Come on, man. Got one more spot in mind. Yep, right around Little the sundowner. Yep. One more sniff. We at the last hole of the day. Look at that sunset going down over beautiful Tennessee. My goodness, I got me a bass sniff out here. <laughs> the weather's been phenomenal. 107 back in Texas. It's like 72 right now. It's crap. Absolutely lovely. I need to get one. Oh, oh, he's on. He's on. He's on. He's on. He's on. Boom. Boom. Look at that. He ain't in the day on a zero. Nope. Why bam? What'd you get it on? Speedworm? Little speedworm. Little guy. Little worming. I don't know. 
definitely got one. Right here on the outside. It's like forever. You gotta get that sniff, dude. You gotta really enjoy it. There it is. It smells good. There it is. It smells like success. Look at that sunset. Yeah, give it a drop. Wah bam. There we go. Wah bam. Fist bump it. Woo. Oh man, this is an awesome, it's an awesome trip up here. Tennessee's pretty, pretty cool vibe. When's your next dangle? We got a uh, tournament late August on uh, Nickajack, and I think that's the next one on the list. Old Nickajack. Home of the, the Bassmaster Classic original. I think I believe came out of that, uh, Nickajack. So much history, bass fishing history here in Tennessee. Also, by the way, folks, world record smallmouth still. State of Tennessee, 11 pounds something. I, I can't remember out of Dale Hollow. Uh, we got some incredible smallmouth up here. Just, just got them. All right, we're dropping off right here at the Omni, middle of downtown. Woo! Woo! This is how you do it in Nashville, right here. Just take the bass boat right up to the to the Music City. This bump. Had a blast. Thank you. Yes, sir. We'll be following you. Oh, yeah. See my man, fist bump. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Last morning in Nashville, y'all. Me and OSG are looking for scooters right now to go tour around on. We've never done this before. Push off. Okay. And Let's rock and roll. Woo! I'm not going very fast. Woo! There you go. OSG. Look at OSG fly. Well, y'all, our time here in Nashville is coming to a close. You know, as we are about to uh, go into the old Grand Old Opry. The original. The original, right here in Nashville. Enjoyed the heck out of our time up here. Want to give a special thanks to the Music City Bass Team for inviting us up here. I enjoyed hanging out with those guys, speaking with them, fishing with them. And I also met some other danglers while I was up here that gave us some other intel about fishing and I want to come back. Oh, she wants to come back. I do. I want to come back and camp here in the Smokies. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No. And the riverbank fish. I feel like that's that's where I'm going to be next I know. Time. We just kind of cracked the surface of all the adventures up here. So, you guys up here in Tennessee, y'all got, got it going on. I'm, I'm going to be coming back. But thank you guys for tuning in for another great outdoor adventure in one of the greatest outdoor states in the Union. And we'll see you back in Texas on that.